What's going on everybody? So today we have a very unique aircraft and an even more unique pilot. Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Armin. Hey, I, everybody. I've known him, geez. 15 years? 15 years, a long time. And yeah. he Eight. first took me flying in this. In a hang glider. Yeah. And I always learned the definition of code brown. And now and then we're going to fly this, which it'll, probably won't be a code brown. But it sure looks like code brown. So, yeah, code brown. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. So this is a gyrocopter. Yes, it's an auto gyro. They were built in uh, Germany. This is built in Germany. Built in Germany. Okay. So I do. I'm a, I'm a fan of auto gyro because it's just simply you can get the parts. I live all the way on the other side of the world, you know. I, but I can and get the parts. Is, by the way, I can get the parts for this aircraft really quick. You know, I call my friend in Chipping, California. Henry Boger, he's a Gino, yeah. and he has all the parts for me. And you can get everything you need. And I can get everything. I pull my habits within three days, you know, if I need the parts, you know. So this is not a helicopter. This is a gyrocopter. Yeah. Right? This is a mechanically driven. Right. This is by so the it. difference between a gyrocopter and a helicopter, the helicopter, the rotor blades are driven by the engine. Okay. On a gyrocopter, this the rotor blades are driven by the wind, by the forward speed. Forward speed. Yeah. So you have the little auto rotation, so you press that little auto rotation button, and then you get that rotor blades to spinning up. While you're sitting on the ground, you get it spinning up to about 200 RPMs. Okay. And once you get to 220 RPMs, you pull that stick back, and then you give it power with the push engine. Okay. That push engine pushes you forward, and as you get it pushed forward, you're creating a lot of airspeed. And that airspeed drives the rotor blades up to 300. And then when you get up to 300, then the front wheel comes off the ground. Then you don't want to get it all the way up. You just keep it close to the ground. And then keep the keep it close to the ground. You're maybe about two feet off the ground. You stay in ground speed. You get up to 60 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour. And then by that time, your rotor RPMs are at 400. And then you just have a flying disc. Yes. And I mean, you flew it. Yeah. How oh, easy it is to gosh. control. Yes. Yeah? And this is a Rotax engine. This is a Rotax engine. Yeah, it's a Rotax engine, engine 914 turbocharged. It's turbo turbocharged. turbocharged on that side. Okay. And uh, I burn about four and a half gallons an hour and with that thing. And how many horsepower? And it's 115. 115 horsepower. 115 horsepower. Yeah. So uh, climb rate, I would say I get maybe a 700 foot climb rate in this with two people. That's impressive. Yeah. With my hang glider, I get, I get a thousand feet. You get a thousand feet with that. With the hang glider, and that's only an 80 horsepower. And why, you know, a lot of people ask, why would you prefer this over the hang glider? It's, it's just easy to handle, you know? In, in, in conditions like what we had today, it was really bumpy close to the ground. Yes. So I don't, Really, in a hang glider, you, you, you the first 300 feet, you're just wrestling, you know? So if your shoulders are good, yeah. your muscles are good, you're good to go. <laughs> but if you're a little weaker, yeah. you want to fly the gyrocopter because that's just easy. That's just two fingers, you know? I mean, easy, easy to handle. How does handle uh, turbulence? just trim it you know with this you just trim it to 100 miles an hour you take your hands off that thing just flies 100 miles an hour and this stick essentially is what's controlling the uh, and, and, and the, the left the and the right yeah and the four and, the, and fast and slower but you do all that basically with just the you trimmer trim. right there and this is the pre while well, you have the camera right here this is the pre-rotator button so when when you get it up to 200 
RPMs, 220 RPMs, you release this pre-rotator button, you pull the stick all the way back, I can't do it right now because it's tied off, and then you let the brake go right here, this is the brake, and then you give it power, full power. Just like that? Yeah, and up you go. Wow, huh? and you obviously you have rotor head speed. Rotor, rotor, rotor speed, rotor speed. Manifold we pressure. We got the um, um, RPMs, there's manifold pressure is right here. Wow. Yeah. So, and then we got the altimeter right here. When the instruments are so off many right. instrumentation of what like a typical helicopter sure. would have, yeah. except just no collector. No, there's no collector. And no. the throttle base. And, and, and the rotor blades, they're, they're fixed. They do, you don't change the angle of attack on the rotor blades. And when you're coming in on a landing, what are you, are you bleeding off? You bleed, you, you come in at 65 miles an hour, you keep it in about maybe five, 10 feet above the ground. You pull the stick back, of course, then you're gonna ground skim a little bit. And then as you get the chest down to the ground, you just pull it all the way back. If you have, let's say a 10 mile an hour headwind, you're not rolling. You just stop it. You're just, just like a helicopter. Wow. So that's the beauty. If you have to land it in the water, you can land it in the water. And you, you just know? come in and just hover it in. Yeah, but only once. Only once. You can't use it anymore. <laughs> you gotta go swimming. That's why we wear the life vest. If you did some low level flying with her, you know, I mean, if the engine quits, I'm going into, into the water. But, you know, but the water is 76 degrees, it's warm. I, I was actually, wouldn't have been too upset about that. <laughs> it's amazing. The views are just great, obviously. Yeah. That's a gyrocopter for you. That's a gyrocopter for you. Yeah, and that sets you back at about brand new 120,000. Certified maybe 130,000. So two kidneys and a liver, and you got yourself a gyrocopter. <laughs> <laughs> so it was time to pull out the gyrocopter. I was actually quite surprised that we were going to go flying. Normally back home when the winds are gusting 30 knots plus, you tend to hang out and wait till it gets better. But with Maui flying, it's always windy here. And Armin's been doing this for many decades. So when I saw that windsock straight out, I trusted that his intuition was that this aircraft would be just fine in these wind conditions. And I soon was about to find out why the gyrocopter is preferred for high wind conditions such as Maui was experienced on this day. Now he's doing a quick pre-flight right now, make sure there's no debris in the rotor blades and everything's clean and clear and that everything looks good. I was getting harnessed up and yes, that was me in the front seat and Armin was going to ride in the back. There's no gauges in the back, everything's in the front, so he was reliant on me giving the proper readouts on switches and whatnot. So it was definitely a hands-on experience. So with a quick prime, and we were getting ready to start it, I turned on the mags, master switch, and he was kind of okay, guiding me through on what is. buttons I needed to push. Right there, yeah. That's How the much choke like right that there. Uh, on all the way, and I just get, and I just turn the starter key to the right. Yeah. Okay. Starter key to and the I right. Turn the master on oh, and engaging. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the engine engage. start. Yeah. Rotax has been making engines for years, and they're known for their reliability and simplicity. It's amazing the technology, technological advancements that they've done, especially with these new turbo. 9 series engines. Everything was looking good as far as readouts. Engine gauges are looking good and we we're letting the engine warm up. Now you're wondering, if you didn't hear earlier, this is not a helicopter per se, it's an auto gyro. So these rotor blades are not driven mechanically like a helicopter is, nor do they pitch like a collective does on a helicopter. They're fixed and only their axis is changed by the inputs of the control stick. It's a pretty sleek looking aircraft from all angles. I'm often asked, are there aircraft that I'm very sketched out by flying it? And I've been in some pretty questionable aircraft over the years, so I'm not going to lie. But I think B-52 
people are often skeptical about flying an aircraft such as a gyrocopter because there's a lot of moving parts, they're tiny, and they feel that, oh, there's a lot that could go wrong with this aircraft. In reality, that's not true. They're one of the most safe aircraft around. The mechanics of these aircraft have been tested beyond their capabilities, and there's a lot of R&D put into rotor blades. But you also have to consider how long a gyrocopter has been around. They were first invented in the late 20s. In fact, if you look the up the Pitcairn Autogyro, it looks like a Stearman biplane that had a baby with a helicopter. And it truly is a marvel uh, of engineering. And it flew in the late 20s, early 30s, and it had a very, very good safety record. Another person to look up, if you haven't researched, is a guy by the name of Ken Wallace. He was uh, famous for building gyrocopters in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and primarily in the James Bond film. He was essentially the godfather of gyrocopters, and frankly, if it wasn't for his expertise and his innovation, I don't think the advancement of gyrocopters such as the model that we're flying in today would have really come to light without his innovation and his work. He really was the man that uh, really brought gyrocopters into the scene of the world. Obviously, the openness of this gyrocopter is wonderful. The only thing that's blocking the wind from our forward speed is this windscreen. And uh, I love that. You know, I'm so used to flying my open cockpit airplane, and I think half the reason why flying is so special is because, well, flying in aircraft such as this, where you truly feel like a bird. So we're getting ready to pull up on the center line of the uh, runway here at Hana Airport. And keep in mind, the wind is gusting nearly 35 knots plus. You can see those palm trees are just laid over. It is a crosswind. And I'm still shocked that we're taking off in these winds. But I've been told that the gyrocopter is not phased by winds nearly as much as a typical fixed wing aircraft is, which makes sense. The surface area of the rotor blades is much smaller and, uh, well, as Armin says, it beats it into submission. So now we're getting all our pre-flight checks done. We are going to start spinning the rotor blade. This is done by a switch on the engagement part of the, the control stick, and it is driven by the pusher engine on the back. Wow. Now we're getting a RPM increase on the rotor head. It has to reach a certain RPM before we can proceed okay. forward because these spinning rotor blades are going to generate the wing surface area needed to fly. Now this engine will not keep the rotor head engaged while we are in flight. That is all done by forward motion. It throttles up. The acceleration is very impressive with this turbocharged Rotax engine and we are off into the air. You can feel within seconds that we are airborne, the wheels are lifting off the ground, and as Armin said, we're going to just kind of pitch forward and ride in ground effect until our RPM rotor head reaches another necessary RPMs, and then we're flying. So now, right now, we're building up airspeed, rotor head RPMs are increasing, and off we go. The climb rate is absolutely impressive with these. And well, as you can see, the views of Hana Airport here in Maui are stuff that you'd see in National, National Geographic. It's just absolutely incredible. Also seeing this uh, ocean and the waves raging below, I sure wouldn't want to engine out over here. I, uh, I feel that one would get quite beat up. We went on a cross-country flight up here and I was definitely getting used to flying the gyrocopter. Armin was busy here taking some videos and uh, I was all smiles. I was, I was absolutely amazed how smooth this aircraft flies and how it cooperates with the winds that we were fighting that day. Anytime I fly a new aircraft, it's always uh, like starting from chapter one. Everything kind of flies somewhat similar, obviously, but every aircraft is totally different. It has these little quirks. The gyrocopter, it was very little stick inputs to do what you needed to do. Uh, very little. Whereas like if you fly a Cessna 152, you got to put a lot more inputs to uh, get it to turn. This, it was almost like a two finger type of input to go the direction that you wanted to go.
Now obviously you see stuff kind of vibrating around, you know, like the camera mount here, the stick, and whatnot, but yes, there is a little bit of vibration in the stick inputs and whatnot, and that's completely normal with auto gyros if you look at any of the videos. But um, yeah, I would say that's about the only odd thing is the amount of vibrations that you kind of feel through the stick inputs and through the aircraft in general. The waterfalls here are absolutely amazing and if you ever get a chance obviously to see them from the ground well also try to get a chance to see it from the air because it's truly uh, out of this world seeing these waterfalls from the air back we dropped a little low and checked out the scenery below here and well there's a lot of trees and a lot of shrubbery cruise speed of these is actually pretty impressive we're doing about 90 miles an hour right here and uh, it felt so stable is incredible I mean this really is when it's in the air it feels just like a regular airplane except you got spinning rotor heads above you Another river slash waterfall flowing right here and wow absolutely incredible incredible flying this gyrocopter was truly an amazing experience I mean it definitely opened up my eyes into the world of gyrocopters and it's quite fascinating the types of gyrocopters there are. And I went down this rabbit hole of all the aircraft designs, and this one is one of the best models in the market right now. They do have other variants that are actually enclosed, but there's something special about this open cockpit style of flying. As you can tell by the smile on my face, it, uh, it was an unforgettable experience. Now, it was time to come in for a landing. <laughs> Once again, by habit, from flying my open cockpit airplane, I'm always looking at wind socks to figure out which direction the wind is coming from. So, as I saw this wind sock, I noticed it was just pitched straight out, and it was a direct crosswind. So, we're coming in, and uh, I'm trying to figure out what the best way of how this is going to land and the type of behaviors because this is going to be my first landing in a gyrocopter especially with these wind conditions and Armin's a great instructor he's a CFI so he just explains on how to do everything and we come in build up our airspeed as we're coming in on final doing our base to final right here and our winds coming from the right side And then slowly backing off the power, keeping the rotor head RPM still high, bleeding off that airspeed, bleeding it off, kind of pitching back a little bit. The wheels are going to touch. And then we just let that speed build off. Pretty simple. The capabilities of these uh, aircraft, especially with these crosswinds, is just fascinating. You would never expect that. I never knew you could fly a gyrocopter in these types of winds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was uh, an experience that was unforgettable. I'll post down in the link if you want to go fly with Armin. He's a wonderful guy. He's a great friend. And most of all, he gives experiences in the aviation world that are world class. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's insane. Do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, and we got more aviation videos coming up. You need to get.
Arminator, like right here in Texas. Arminator. <laughs> Arminator. <laughs> Arminator. <laughs>